There we go. Hi, I'm Edwin Rutsch, and uh, I'm director of the Center for Building a Culture of Empathy, and today I'm here with Joe Kennedy. Uh, thanks uh, for joining me. That's Joe. my pleasure, Edwin. Well, just to give a little bit of background, uh, you're a focusing practitioner and trainer, and you have a website, uh, focusingaustralia.com. Uh -huh. And what we wanted to do actually was to model the focusing with me being the focusy, I guess the word is. Uh, well, we, we would just <laughs> the focusy, or, or we, we would just say the focuser. So I, I am the companion. I'm in this particular instance. I'm the companion, and you're the focuser. Oh, okay. I'm the focuser, and you're the companion. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the way that I got in contact with you is uh, you'd sent me an email saying, oh, this is, you're interested in empathy and here's this process that's very empathic. And mm -hmm. on your website says you've been doing, you were doing uh, mediation first and then you discovered focusing, maybe you could set that up. No, I was I was working. I've always worked as an arts practitioner. I've been an actor and a film director, and but I had a long process of meditation. I work, you know, I was a meditator for twenty five years, thirty years, and seriously meditating. And then I had one focusing session, and it was so profound that I I just started to 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 want more and more and. Uh, so I just followed the focusing in tandem with the meditation and and then I became a focusing teacher. So I really changed tracks. I mean, I still work in the arts sometimes, but focusing is my main, what I do most days. Yeah. Mm, I said uh, mediation, I meant uh, meditation. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's very uh, close. It's very As close. I always, I, always get, <laughs> I always get confused. I read, read it wrong, need my glasses. Um, okay, then is there any more that you'd like to say or should we go into actually giving a demonstration? We want to do maybe a 45 minute or hour, whatever it is, a demonstration of how it works. And this. Yeah, that, yeah why, don't, why don't we start there? And <clears throat> well, maybe I should just say a few things at the beginning. Okay. And that, that is just that focusing, uh, there's a focusing institute in New York and Jean. Gendlin is the who's a philosopher and a psychologist. He's the founder of the Focusing Institute, and he worked with Carl Rogers, and they did longitudinal studies on what is it that uh, helps people, like the people who actually recover when they go into therapy. What is is there something they all have in common? And they did longitudinal studies and discovered that the people who actually were able to change. Uh, during the process, and it didn't matter who the therapist was or what kind of therapy it was, were well, the people who had the capacity to actually stop and sense into their bodies and kind of sit with not knowing in a place that perhaps doesn't have language. And so that's really what is at the you know, the centre of what we're going to do, this capacity to be present to something that hasn't in fact yet formed, that is forming, and that may not feel so comfortable. And so rather than turning away from something which isn't so comfortable, we actually make space to come into relationship with it. So it's really the art of coming into relationship with what is inside us, and so it's it's really a high-end art of, of self-empathy. Mm, nice. So I guess I was kind of interested just in when I saw your site in that, you know, it's about empathy and then I thought, well, you know, how do we be empathic with each other? And, and my experience tells me that we first must be empathic with ourselves. Well, I just uh, came across a quote uh, from Carl Rogers and he says, uh, Empathy is saying to someone, and basically this is what he's saying, I'm trying to be a companion to you in your search and your exploration. I want to know, am I with you? Is this the way it seems to you? Okay. Is this the thing you're trying to express? Is this the meaning it has for you? So in a sense, I'm saying I'm walking with you step by step, and I want to make sure I'm with you. Am I with you? 
So this is a little <laughs> bit of my understanding about empathy, Carl Rogers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's so beautiful. It's such a beautiful quote <laughs> and such a nice thing for you to say, you know, before we go in because as your companion, you know, this is really wanting, what I'm wanting to check, you know, am I there for you? And so what I'll do is I'll reflect back and, and if it's not exactly right that I'm offering you, I'm hoping that what you'll do is you'll check back to your body and you'll go, no, it's not quite that, it's, it's this. Or So I'm really here just taking a step with you. You take a step and I take a step in exactly the way Carl Rogers is talking about. Okay, well I'm ready to start whenever you are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Let's great. Do it. <laughs> All right. And so are you comfortable? Uh yes. And so so maybe and what I'll do is I'll just take give you a lead in to start with, just to kind of bring you into your body and and first of all, maybe just noticing how it feels to be in the room where you are. Like there's a body kind of a, a knowing about just being there and, you know, underneath language and just, I don't know what the weather is like outside, but your body will have a sense of that, you know, is it warm or is it cold or just kind of slowing down to to get the body feel of that because to do this work we really need to kind of pause and so it's sunny and cool outside mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's a little cool in here in this room Okay. Yeah, so just you got the kind of feel of that and then just kind of noticing too how it feels to be here having this conversation with me, like, you know, your body has a sense of that too and, you know, it's under language and maybe you wouldn't even be able to say it in words but you're just kind of slowing down to get the feel of that. I'm wondering if I should say what I'm feeling or just be just to, tuning just in. Be, just tuning in. It's, mm -hmm. This is really a space, a time for you to just kind of have it in a sense. Mm -hmm. Just having the, the body feel of where you are and how it is for you. And, and maybe becoming aware of, of the support that's there too from, from the chair. And, from the floor and oh. you're really kind of making the space to come home to yourself and inviting your body to really just land and quite often our bodies feel like they've got to keep on holding us up even when they don't and this is a, a way of saying it's okay, you know, you've got support there, you're supported by the chair and supported by the, the floor and in fact you're supported by being contained in the room and supported by the earth and the trees outside and the sky and just really letting your body have that. And maybe noticing too just that sense of support that comes from the breath as it comes in and as it comes out. And there's really nothing that you need to do. It's just a, you're just noticing what's there. And then just gently starting to take your awareness in and starting to become aware of your own aliveness. And you'll be noticing your throat and what's there and how that feels. And your chest. And you're just acknowledging that someone's walked into the room and just and whatever comes up, we just acknowledge it. So noticing your chest, 
noticing the stomach. And deep down in your belly. When it feels right, you might like to give a gentle invitation. I'm just inviting in a body sense of anything there that would like to come and be known. When you have a sense of something there, you might want to let me know. I feel a, a nausea, kind of a sort of a nausea feel. Mm -hmm. um, anxiety, nausea, mm -hmm. within a within a soft bed of soft, kind of a softness, sitting mm -hmm. on a soft feeling of softness. Yeah. So you're sensing that something is there that's kind of nauseous and anxious, and it's sitting on a, a bed of softness. And by sharing it, it actually, the nausea actually sunk deeper into that nausea. I mean, the nausea sunk deeper into the softness. It kind of went to, it kind of sunk through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just giving that time and space. The anxiety and nausea is from my you know, stomach area. It's take. It's become not so focused, but more spread out. More of a taking up a larger space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're noticing it. It's kind of it's changing as you're sitting with it, and it's taking up more space now. And I felt a desire to get closer to it, to move into it, to be, get very close to it. And then I also felt uh, the, it, the nausea move deeper into my heart and in my throat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so something there, like maybe, and just checking this, like there's something that's wanting to kind of get closer or sink into it. And then something else that, like the nausea, kind of responding to that. I'm not sure if that's right, but just checking if that's how it feels. Yeah, the wanting to get closer to it on one hand, and on the other, would like it to be over, just not deal with it. Yeah. Kind of avoid it. Kind of go somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> So something there, it's it's not it's wanting it to go somewhere else. It's really wanting to avoid it. And maybe just acknowledging that, like you're letting that place know, you, you hear that that's what it's wanting. Yeah, I'm hearing that there's a part that there's a part that there's something that wants to avoid the feeling and another part that wants to go into it. Mm -hmm. And sensing both things are there and just giving space to that. Mm. 
there's a sharp, a sharp anxiety uh, within my lower chest, and it, and it, there's a, and it radiates. It's radiating. It's radiating, radiating, radiating up higher into, into the awareness, into my awareness, mm -hmm. into the head area, radiating. Yeah, so you're sensing there's something sharp and it's anxious and it's radiating, radiating up into your head and maybe just saying hello to it, like you're really letting it know, you can sense that it's there. And hello. Mm -hmm. I kind of felt a sudden wanting to pound the fist feel. Okay. Like pound the fist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, know. just you inviting your body to do that. Your body really knows what it needs to do. Something there that's wanting to pound its fist. And even if it makes a noise, just really allowing that. That's what's wanted. Yeah, it was a sudden wanting to pound the fist. It just came out of nowhere. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, it's just... It was there, and I did it, and... Yeah, so it's like it's showing you that's how it feels. Like sensing something is anxious, and it is wanting to pound its fist. You checking that. I'm noticing a thought arise in the top, more in this in this area, and it was, oh, I wonder who might be watching this, and then I wondered, oh, will will, will they be bored by it? So I yeah. kind of had a little bit of self is kind of a curiosity about that. Are you bored out there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so something is, is concerned or, or wondering if the people watching this process might be bored. And you're just acknowledging that, that that's how something feels there too. The anxiety feels stuck there in my chest. There's a sense of stuckness with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're noticing there's a, there's a kind of a stuckness. And, and maybe just uh -huh. really seeing if you can describe that even more. Just yeah, there's, yeah. A, there's a stuckness. It's, it's just there, and I'm impatient. I'm feeling it impatient, like I want it to move. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a little bit like, okay, let's kind of move on with this. And uh, it just it just sits there, and there's this. Let's move on with it, but it doesn't want to move. And so, okay, I'm gonna just be present with you, stuckness. There's uh, I don't know if I should take. And then I'm wondering, well, did I take on that? Be present. It's should I detach from the be present? Maybe just just acknowledging that there's two things here. There's something that is kind of stuck, and it's not moving for some good reason. And then there's something else that is really wanting it to move. So there's a kind of a struggle going on. Yeah. And maybe just kind of going really slow here and, and noticing the quality of the struggle itself. And Yeah, the stuckness feels... Like there's an underlying pain to it, so there's a kind of a radiating pain underneath that, mm -hmm. and that's what there's a feeling of uh, wanting just to avoid the pain, like not just sit with the pain, but find some way of transforming it, doing something with it. Mm -hmm. On one hand, and then mm -hmm. on the other hand, just be with the pain. It's a uh, like a ball, like a, it's like a ball, just yeah. kind of this ball of pain. 
Yeah, so you're noticing it's really specific. It's like a ball there of pain, and your hands are kind of showing you what it's like, and, and something else not wanting to be with that pain, and, and really acknowledging both of those things, and just kind of noticing if your awareness is being drawn to one of them more than the other in this moment. Yeah, my awareness is drawn to. Okay, let's let me be with the pain. Let's. Like uh, bring a presence to it and just wait and be present with it and be patient. Yeah, there's a, a quality of patience. Mm -hmm. of, it's like a spaciousness, a quality of spaciousness around it. Mm -hmm. uh, of patience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe just taking time to, to, to really enjoy that that quality of patience that's there, just like in the relationship itself with something there that is painful. Yeah, I can feel the pain radiate throughout the body. I can mm -hmm. feel it, I can feel it in the physical muscles of the Mm -hmm. of the face and in the chest it radiates out and it actually mm -hmm. affects the whole mm -hmm. the whole yeah. being the whole the body the bodily muscles are mm -hmm. are in a in a sense of uh, painfulness yeah. Yeah, so you're noticing the pain is throughout the whole body and it's in the muscles and just acknowledging that and just giving it all the time and all the space it needs to kind of express itself. Yeah, it's more in the upper part of the body in the... Mm -hmm. here. Yeah, and so the pain, it, it expresses itself and we just kind of invite it to do exactly what it needs to do. Yeah, there's a, a pain in the chest and it's, it's becoming smaller but it's radiating. There's a radiating quality that it's, mm -hmm. it's smaller and it's, it's more in the muscles of... of of the body. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're noticing it, it's smaller but it is in the muscles of the body. And maybe just turning to it and this and inviting it to let you know how it feels from its point of view. There's more that it wants you to know there. Uh, yeah, if it wants me to know something, it's it, uh, it's it's painful, it's rigid, mm. it's uh, numbing, it causes a shortness of breath. There's a shortness of breath. Mm. Yeah, maybe just letting it know you hear that, that it, for it it's painful and rigid and numbing and, and comes with this shortness of breath. Yeah, as it's reflected, as you're reflecting it, it's moving up and turning into a, I can feel it turn into, instead, I can feel the rigidity through uh, the body and it, a uh, feeling of something like a cloud. Uh, mm -hmm. It's kind of moved up mm -hmm. into this other mm -hmm. form, a form of, uh, of uh, like a cloud, uh, a jagged cloud, a 
something. Sometimes it's hard to express, to really express and articulate the feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this much you do know that it's like a jagged kind of a cloud, which is, as you sit with it, it's moving up and changing. Um, I'm a bit mesmerized by the transformation that the the pain has gone to more of a to a different quality that it it uh, it's it's more of a coolness a uh, like a glass, yeah. There's a, it's a feeling of like glass, a sense mm -hmm. of clear glass, more of a glass feel to it, and it mm -hmm. has uh, kind of the it has the has the rigidity of of glass, but kind of a solidness, rigidity of glass feel to mm -hmm. it. Yeah, so you're noticing it's changing, and that now it's like this. It's glass, and there's a rigidity and. And there's almost like a desire to, just like with glass plate, is to really feel it and kind of rub my hand up and down around it mm. to mm. kind of like a piece of glass. I would just wonder what it, what it, what does that feel like to rub my hand on mm. on that? I don't know why I'm wanting. For some reason, I just want to rub it. Almost think imagining. Kind of like cleaning glass, like getting a yeah. kind of a rubbing. The yeah, that's it. Uh, kind of a yeah, so rubbing. Uh -huh. Yeah. So the body itself, it has a knowing, and it's trying to clean or rub or feel that glass. So uh, there's a uh, another area that's not quite. It's not like the glass, but it's more of a softer. It's a black, softer area in this. Mm -hmm. And so. Um, wishing I could articulate it better, but it's it's just like this softer, fluffier area. Yeah, so there's something there that's softer and, and fluffier and a dark, a dark area. Your hands seem to have a knowing or connected to that or something like that. Yeah, it's kind of a, more of a pleasant feel. It's a, kind of a warmer, uh, more of an opening feel mm -hmm. com compared to the, I can feel like an opening, more of a mm -hmm. kind of a... Kind of a releasing. It's like the glass doesn't shatter. The glass is kind of around in this area more, but then here is almost like a, not even a melting of it. It's a, I don't know. It is. It's I don't know what it is. It's more of a fluffy kind of a fluffy your quality to it, and then. Behind it, deeper down, is feels connected to more of an opening of, of my heart. So all these things are going on at the same time. Like there's that feeling of the like glass. There's this kind of more softer black, and then there's like an opening, kind of more of a like a lighter, whiter opening of that is just slightly, slightly opening. 
you're sensing all of that is there the glass and the movement and something fluffy and then a sense of something there in your heart that's kind of opening Yeah, it's a little bit like a pouring out of the heart, and it's actually kind of directed towards towards you, I guess, for maybe a sense of uh, gratitude for accompanying me and uh, reflecting, kind of being present with where I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're sensing that what's happening is that there is a pouring out of the heart and being listened to and it's pouring towards me for being present to you in this moment. Yeah, and a feeling of gratitude. Mm -hmm. yeah, sensing this gratitude that comes with the listening here. I'm just really taking time to, to be with the gratitude too, like you can kind of invite your body to really enjoy the quality of that gratitude that's there in your heart and inviting your body to really just take that in as deeply as it would like to. Yeah, the, the gratitude is there as well as these other feelings of the, of the, the the glass, but even that is transformed into more of a more of a more of like a fist. So it's kind of multiple feelings: the feeling of gratitude, but yet that area has kind mm. of has a has a, bit of a constriction, like a fist. Mm. And maybe just turning to the fist and and acknowledging it, like letting it know you can sense that's there too. Maybe noticing if there's an emotional quality that comes with the fist or something like that or a mood. Or Well, the, the fist is a, a kind of a tension in the upper part, kind of a kind of a struggling to see a uh, kind of a pushing, kind of a pushing forward. Mm. Yeah, so it's kind of showing you that it's it's pushing forward and it's struggling to see. Maybe just letting it know you really do get that. Yeah, I really do. S see the struggling forward and the struggling to see and the, I see the, I feel the, the, I feel the tension and the constriction mm. and the pushing mm -hmm. and I see the now the muscles constricting and the mm -hmm. focusing. I feel the the uh, focus, the concentration, and the concentration. I see the concentration and the focus. Yeah, so you're sensing the concentration and the focus there. And I noticed that you there was a, a lag in the in the in the reflection, and I and I and I, and I felt ooh I'm waiting for my reflection <laughs> for getting it reflected. I really want this. I really need that reflection. Where's my reflection? Come on, let's let's bring that reflection. 
And then, <laughs> oh, good, I got the reflection. <laughs> Very yeah, good. So something, <laughs> something really showing you. It needs to be heard. It's wanting yeah, to be heard. Yeah, exactly. And reflected, yeah. Yeah, and I feel kind of like a little disappointed. I'm kind of a little anxious. Now let's get my reflection in there. <laughs> I really need that. It's really helping. So where is it? <laughs> Yeah. And maybe just <laughs> maybe just acknowledging that something really it knows it's really needing this reflection and letting it know you hear that that too. It's, it's really yeah. needing. And it's uh, kind of connecting, kind of the reflection and looking for the reflection. Well, I was looking for the reflection, but it was like connected. I could see the roots going down to. A little bit of, mm -hmm. uh, of an anxiety. You know, there's a, there's a something. So it was some kind of a, a felt connection. There's, mm -hmm. I'm seeing a felt connection from that wanting that reflection to, uh, to like an anxiety, mm -hmm. to a deeper anxiety. So you know, it's like a light. It's a slight. I'm seeing a slight anxiety there that that was connected to. Yeah, and just and just gently kind of turning to that something that is anxious and really wanting you to know that it's really wanting your awareness and wanting this reflection and just really letting it, even putting a gentle hand on it, just to let it know you you can sense that it's there. You're there to keep it company. I do. I notice that by that it's moved my awareness from one part of the body. That the awareness is moved to this other part of the body, so that there's like an awareness, like oh, that's interesting. The awareness is shifted. It's just automatically shifted to another part of the body. Maybe mm -hmm. not totally automatic, because you guided a little bit, but there is a shift. Mm -hmm. of awareness. Mm -hmm. And then a sense that, oh, awareness shifts throughout the body. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, wow, look, like awareness shifts through the body. Mm -hmm. yeah. stepping, a little stepping back and saying, oh, look, the awareness <laughs> shifts throughout the body. Yeah, that's like, kind of like your body is showing you that awareness shifts. So there's the awareness of the, the shifting. And the awareness shifts, and I'm seeing the awareness has shifted, and then it's shifted to even a larger spaciousness. <laughs> so the awareness has, has grown, and it seems mm -hmm. to be a diffused awareness of a larger of a larger space. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and your body is showing you, and it's there in your arms of this kind of awareness, kind of having more space and shifting, and kind of diffuse. And your body kind of not gently moving on the chair, like maybe even noticing the quality of that movement that's there now. Yeah, I'm wanting to explore the space with my body so that my feel the physical body move within that space. Mm. Yeah, just really inviting your body to do exactly what it needs to do. And even inviting it to stand up if that feels like the right thing to do. Mm. 
We're just coming up to the last the last few minutes, so there's still plenty of time. Yeah. Just be with what's there. It's a it's it's uh, I'm feeling a, a sense of enjoyment of the spaciousness, like, oh, great, this feels so nice, like, oh, it's just, let's just enjoy the spaciousness, it's just okay. feels a little bit of a celebration, a little bit of a, kind of a, of a celebration of a joy of a, wanting to savor it, you know, just to, like, yeah. savoring, like, a, almost like a tasting and savoring the, the mm -hmm. flavor of the, of the spaciousness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and really taking all the time that you would like to, to really taste and savour the spaciousness that is there now. And I was thinking, can we do this for a couple hours? <laughs> <laughs> Will you be here with me for a couple hours? <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Yeah, and then what happens is that it continues to unfold in your body, just inviting your body to, you know, for what's there, this spaciousness to continue to unfold after the session. And, and then maybe taking some time to, to thank your body and to, to thank all these different things that have come. Mm -hmm. So let it, let it unfold like after we're done here, just keep letting mm. letting the body letting my body uh, let it unfold and to I think I was hearing be thankful for it or be, yeah yeah um, if, if it feels right you, you uh -huh. thank your body and, and thank your body's process which is maybe even letting the inside places know that you'll come back and, and you'll listen again inside and you know this is just a step on a journey of listening. So this is just you're saying it's just one step in a mm -hmm. of listening mm -hmm. to the, mm -hmm. the body. Just be with the body and listen to the body. Yeah. It's kind of a way of being grateful for its aliveness and, and creativity and yeah. That's what I see is the, there's a creativity, a uh, an unfolding that mm. happens. And the unfolding, if I have space for it, I'm feeling if it happens within this spaciousness, it's a very pleasant unfolding. It's like, oh, well, there's <laughs> something else. There's something else. Wow. It's, you know, wow, that's pretty cool. You know, it's like, ooh. <laughs> that's cool. Let's just watch the unfolding for the, you know, it's like like the movie kind of unfolding, but it's kind of coming out of here. Yeah, it's your, your own movie, movie unfolding out of your own being and the endless creativity that is, that is there if we, if we go slow and we start to go inside and the kind of incredible beauty of being a human being. Well, I feel pretty settled, quite settled and and uh, calm and relaxed. So mm -hmm. you know, there's a sense of spaciousness and completeness. Mm -hmm. Great. And so just inviting your eyes to open when they're ready and really taking all the time that they would like. As you start to bring your awareness back. And uh oh, there's the world out there again. <laughs> Getting a little bit of anxiety again. <laughs> it's coming back. <laughs> and just putting a gentle hand on something, something that feels a bit anxious about the world out there. <laughs> 
<laughs> and and welcome back. <laughs> you know, that was welcome. really nice. That yeah, really. Uh, well, wow, that, that was a nice place to uh, end and come into that spaciousness. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sold. Yeah, it's like, uh, uh, I mean, I can set up because I was having some anxieties before we started. You know, I had mm -hmm. an argument with my partner and... Um, there were some other things, other kind of cons concerns, kind of some financial things. And I was like feeling really uptight and really uh, mm -hmm. anxious and, and so mm -hmm. forth. So uh, just you, know, just you accompanying, accompanying me, reflecting back uh, where I was, following where I was. It's just kind of this spaciousness eventually started opening up and then mm -hmm. It was like uh, just a, a, a feeling of joy. I just of oh yeah, <laughs> there's stuff there, you know. To, and so yeah. very nice. Right, and and it's so it's so beautiful, isn't it? That you know, it's it's really just about one human being being with another human being, and from anxiety to joy, just in the listening. Yeah. Like be, the, making the space to be heard. And so, so what happens in a focusing partnership is that you know you, I would be your companion, and then we would swap, and you would listen to me. And so, it, you know, it's it's a way of, of that people are doing this all around the world on the phone and in person, and and it's a way of being together in this empathic way, just to make the space to to listen in such an embodied way. Well, it's very much like uh, the empathic listening of the Carl Rogers being with someone. We do the empathy circles, reflective listening uh, about whatever someone is talking, whatever comes up for them. But the uh, focus, I mean, the coming in on the felt sense and following, you know, kind of following the felt sense has is a much more emotional feeling, sensation. Uh, I mean, it brings in in that I think more than just a reflective listening. And plus, there's there's a lot of time. How, how long do you usually go for with? Uh, well, it depends. You know, people have sessions where they only have 15 minutes, or you know, that was about 45 minutes. Okay. You know, and 45 is a great amount of time because you can go really deeply. But people who are focuses, you know, something might come up, you'll suddenly find yourself in a difficult situation. So you'll just bring a focusing friend and say, can you listen to me? And they'll say, I've got five minutes. So you'll just go to the place that feels distressed or whatever it is. And just having another person there who can listen to you for even a short period of time can really transform, you know, what is being held or what is being experienced. And... Uh, you know, it's, it's much more difficult to do this on your own, but there just does seem to be something about the capacity for the body to change what, you know, what is held and the way it's held if another person is listening at this level. And, this, and you know, the Gendlin's work, it came out of the work with Carl Rogers. So, you know, it's, it's the next kind of level mm -hmm. of it. Yeah, they uh, in some of the papers, uh, Carl Rogers said he references Jenla and talks about the ongoing flow of feelings that people have. This and mm -hmm. exactly what you were talking about the that if I'm sharing something and I get a reflection back, what is it that I'm checking? If like when I if I share and we're checking how accurate is that with my feeling, what's going on in me, and that was that quote I read from Carl Rogers, yeah. like, being with a person, this is what I'm hearing you say, this is what I'm seeing, do I have it right? Am I, am I still yeah. with you? And I'm just checking here to accompany you on this uh, journey. And there's something about this, uh, that journey, going with someone that has a very healing quality and even yeah. restores, you know, just kind of having a post you know, conflict uh, mm. situation has kind of cleared that up. So, um, something to, to try out on my partner. So, <laughs> <at some point laughs> yes. 
Well, exactly. And, you know, and people bring it into their relationships. So, you know, you, you might be in a, at a point of conflict and you go, hang on, let's just take a pause here. Now let's just notice, let's go to our bodies and notice, okay, something in me feels really ragged. I can feel it in my throat. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully, you know, your, your partner will reflect that. And, and then they might have a, you know, and say, well, something in me feels like this, you know, okay, so something in you feels like that. But, but the, the beauty of it is that you slow it down and you take it back to the body. And the body, you know, it holds more than, you know, it's more than cognition. It holds the past and the future and the present and it's underneath language. And so it's where the kind of intricate complexity is. And this is, in fact, where change happens in a human being, in the body itself. So we're making space by giving this uh, listening and reflecting and for change to happen because this is where change does happen. And this is what Jendlin discovered, you know, in, in, in those studies. Yeah, so it's, it's a matter of uh, incorporating this into our lives, the uh, empathic listening, the, the connection, having the partners, and yeah. it, uh, um, I think just for, for well-being, for mm. uh, just general well-being, I think is something we need to do on an ongoing basis, this empathic being and, and nurturing it. And I, I mean, you, I don't know how long you've been uh, doing this now, but I, I think it, I would imagine as you do it more and more, you're developing more of that resilience. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you, you develop resilience and, and, you, and you also, you just naturally feel more compassion for others, you know, and for yourself. It's, um, you know, and that becomes wider and wider and wider and, and, and more and more and more spacious. And, you know, and also, you know, my sense is too, it's such a creative act because our own processing is so creative. Mm. So it kind of brings with it a creativity of thinking too. And, how do you see the uh, the creativity? What is the creativity part? It's that it's almost like just being present with the body, and just the body automatically has some kind of a a creativity. It's just almost like following the creativity of the body, what it has to say. Exactly right. It's it's just that you know. It's like you you think okay, well I've got to make this. You know, I'm making a picture, and I get the felt sense of it, and okay, it's a stone, and suddenly the if you just kind of let go of of the cognitive way of trying to make it happen, mm -hmm. you just kind of follow it. Okay, there's a stone, and there's a bridge, and there's a and there it all is, and it kind of and I'm a writer too with films, and it's like it kind of comes from. It just drops into your lap. You just have to <laughs> be ready for it, in a sense. It just naturally unfolds. And well, what's next? I kind of have this feeling come up like, okay, what's next? What do we do next? Uh, you know, what's, what's the next step? What is, what, uh, how do we progress? I don't know. What would you like to do? <laughs> what would you like to do next? Change the world. <laughs> make the world more empathic. You know, how do we make the world more empathic? Like, well, yeah. you know, that's that's certainly what you know, my my what I'm trying to do down here in Australia is uh, you know is you know, once I discovered focusing I thought, you know, why isn't everyone doing this? You know, it feels delicious, it's create creative, it's um and so I teach focusing to people and um you know, I'm always surprised how few people know about focusing. So for me, I guess it's just teaching people how to do this. Mm -hmm. So just keep uh, spreading the word that uh, you, you, yeah. you're seeing the, the benefits of it and there's a sense of, why aren't more people doing this? This feels so good. <laughs> it's like, I don't understand it. Why? And, but, and so you're just teaching and just getting teaching. the word out there. It sounds like That's right. what I'm hearing. That's exactly right. And, you know, you learn it and then it's free. Like you don't have to go and see therapists or anything like that. You know, it's, it's a way of being with each other. And, um, and then you can take it to your children and your families. And, and at the moment I'm trying to put together a program for schools in Australia. And uh, for me, I've brought up my child who's now 19 and to be a focuser. And, you know, to watch a 19-year-old boy who just naturally focuses, you know, it's great. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
you know, it's cheek magnet, you know. <laughs> a cheek magnet. <laughs> now the girls want to be with them to. Uh, That's right, because he can uh, listen. If he's right? listening to them, and everybody wants that. They want to be around someone that listens to them, and. That's um, right. So yeah. all those men out there, those men out there who are you know wanting to have a connection, you know, learning to listen. This is a great way of learning to listen. Yeah, I do wonder about that. Why? I mean, I see the benefits of empathy, and this is uh, like a another uh, aspect of the empathy where you go go more into the felt sense and really follow closely, and, mm -hmm. and takes into the feelings more clearly. And mm -hmm. um, I wonder too why more people are like you're saying um, aren't interested in that. I there's this just a sense of you know, you see all the problems in the world. I mean, I just see all the problems in the world, and and uh, it seems that empathy can do so much to resolve, you know, and address them. Mm. I think you know my sense is that people are quite often scared of what's inside them. You know, people are scared of pausing and slowing down, and people think that you know mm. inside them are these saboteurs, and they're going to be attacked from inside, and. And I think that's really the bridge that needs to be crossed. And it's really with the individual of can I just be with myself? And that's a very big journey because, you know, so many so many of us have been brought up to think that we're not okay. So if we so don't feel like, yeah, if we don't feel like we're okay, then why would I how you know, how can I mm. dare to be with myself and I don't really deserve to take this time for myself? Or it's self-indulgent to be present or empathic with myself, and that's such a cultural thing. You know, it's so pervasive. So I think that's kind of where we are. So it's dealing with some kind of a cultural norms of being afraid of what's going on inside of ourselves, and not even kind of wanting to go there, and kind of in a, in a fear of what's happening. And so let's yeah. go do something else. Absolutely, and and you can sort of see that I, you know, I, I looked at the thing on TED by Christine Neff, and um, and you know she was talking just about the way, uh, you know, as children, girls by the age of three, start to lose their self-esteem mm. because they started to feel that they're not um, attractive enough. At, you know, at grade three, that is just so young. So we're so used to looking at ourselves and valuing ourselves from the outside in, as opposed from what it's actually like in here to be a human being. It's like we've kind of got it arse end up mm -hmm. <laughs> to be. So, it, you know, that's my kind of sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for, so it's like we're, instead of looking what's in here, we're looking out there. And you're saying, I'm hearing you say that, uh, you know, girls, is, is young girls are starting to look out there instead of looking in inside and, and that's what we maybe what we need to do in general. Every it's what you're is to look more inside and maybe speak address those fears that are inside of us. Well, to keep company with those fears and to say something in inside me doesn't feel like it is good enough for some reason, and I can have compassion for that. Something inside me feels like I should be something other than what I am, and I can have compassion mm, for that. Mm -hmm. And as we kind of sit with these things inside that we all carry, they, they dissipate and they change and they turn into joy. Because well, I felt, uh, yeah, I felt uh, gratitude, um, you know, kind of in that pain that I was in. I was in pain coming out of that, this argument that uh, uh, I was feeling real gratitude towards you as it was shifting. I, I did mention the gratitude. I could read. I was yeah. like a very strong feeling, just gratitude that you were there, that you were present, that you were accompanying me. So, mm. yeah, great. And and you know, and, and I want to say, for me to sit with you is a great pleasure. Like it's just a really beautiful thing to sit with someone, and and just offer your own embodiment in a sense. You know, just just to be present to another human being. It's you know, in our ordinariness, and our ordinariness is so rich and creative and <laughs> beautiful. There's no end to it. You know, it's sort of it's amazing. 
So there's something about being with, being the listener, being the accompanier that, is, that has a, a, a quality to it that, that you are getting something from that. You're, I mean, there's yeah. uh, something, it's not like you're just giving, or, but that you're actually on a journey also and that you're kind of being nourished maybe. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm absolutely, now that's a beautiful word to, to say it with nourished. Yeah, I feel nourished from our connection. And, you know, when I'm listening to you, I'm also being with myself. So, you know, I'll, you know, like something might come up, I might get triggered or suddenly I'll have a sense of something in my chest. And so I'll say hello to that. I'll acknowledge that while at the same time being present to you. Oh, so while you were doing the uh, the focusing, the reflecting, you were actually noticing what was going on inside yourself too, and trying to be present uh, yeah. internally with what was happening with you at the same time as you were being present with me. Yeah, exactly, and, and beautifully reflected, and and so so you being so so being able to be present to me and present to you, it really gives me a sense of of being. Uh, here in the moment and that is joyous in itself that mm. I can be present here in the moment and so the process itself gives me that. Mm -hmm. So you're you're feeling a sense of presence, uh, you're in the moment, you're feeling yourself, you're feeling me and you're having this sense of being in the moment and there's like a sense of joy that you're having yeah, yourself. Out of this. Hey, this is kind of fun. I'm here with Edwin, you know, following him and his journey, feeling very present. I'm having a great time. Exactly. <laughs> I'm just I'm just surfing on your presence, you know. <laughs> uh, well, maybe sometime I can surf on your presence as well, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In fact, I kind of was. I think it was mutual surfing in a sense. There was just, I could feel your presence sense too so that was something that I was that was was uh, giving me space as well so so something about this connection just being connected with another human being at this felt sense that is just uh, very nourishing uh, mm -hmm. of its own and uh, seems to be also like a healing it, I was kind of like you know wiping the windows and it's kind of like <laughs> it was like a bit of an emotional the window wiping kind of going on here for me, so. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. And and isn't it great, like, how your body knows? Like, you mightn't have the language for it, but your body knows what's going on. So we kind of have this knowledge. It's so many, you know, there's a consciousness in the being itself, you know. And if you let the being be itself, it, it kind of carries forward. And yeah. we're kind of so used to holding on and, Trying to be something that we have a perception of from the outside, out, we can't do it. Can't even express or use our whole bodily intelligence, and so yeah. this is what it starts to open up to. It's it's kind of developing uh, that sense of trust uh, that what that something will emerge, that the next yeah. thing will emerge, and that it seems to need practice. It's not like you can just say do it. It's, it seems to me that we need to keep practicing and practicing this empathy and it's mm. through that empathy uh, there's almost like this resilience, this spaciousness yeah. that starts yeah. developing and then uh, and it just keeps growing and it's got to be practiced too. It's like you, know, you don't just do it That's one right. time it's like an ongoing uh, way That's of right. being. It's it's like a muscle, you know, like you, you need to keep riding the bike each day or walking or whatever just to keep your muscles working. So use it or lose it and, you know, and, and you can develop <laughs> this muscular capacity for empathy and being present with each other and really having more of yourself. Well, what is the uh, trajectory then for learning focusing? What would one do? Uh, you start with uh, doing a session like this, like now with with video it seems like it seems to work uh, pretty well online. Oh See? yeah, it works really well online and so you you know you can just do sessions with someone who's a focusing teacher or um, and then it's taught in different ways around the world. In, in America um, there's the Focusing Institute in New York and there's lots of te lists of teachers from all around the world on there. Um, Anne Weiser Cornell is one teacher in America who um, who a lot of people uh, work with, and she's at focusingresources.com. 
Um, and I teach uh, levels of focusing, like level one, two, three, and four, or you can do one-on-one -on -one sessions with me, and I'm at focusingaustralia.com. So most people will do like a level one course and maybe three one-on-ones, and in the, in the level one course, usually you'll meet you know, a group of five or ten people, and then you start partnerships with them. And it's usually a five-week course, and incrementally each week you'll learn you know, another step towards you know, how to actually be a focuser and a companion. Mm -hmm. And then how does it go beyond that? You just start, then you just start doing it with uh, friends and others? Yeah, and then you just start doing it, you know, once you know how to do it, you just start doing it and you, then you st gradually you find that people want more and more of it and they start to live a focusing life. <clears throat> so, you know, you're always kind of pausing and slowing down and going to the felt sense of, well, what's here, you know, in, you know, I'm cooking, but what's the felt sense of what I'm wanting to eat or, you know, what's the felt sense of this relationship that I'm having with you? So well, you, you know, just, mm -hmm. sorry, go ahead. I'll just, you just learn to get the bodily dimension of experiencing and within that is this wider intelligence that, we can have access to if we slow down enough to to hear it and you know to get it and to have it. Well, um, you know, you had mentioned Kristen Neff. Uh, I'm going to be doing a, another interview with her in a couple of weeks. I'm going to mention uh, the focusing to her. Maybe we can actually do a session. I don't know if she's experienced it, but that would be kind of interesting. I'm trying yeah. to even. I'm trying to do an empathy circle with her. That we do it with empathic listening. Her and uh, Chris, the partner that she's working with, um, on her oh, self compassion. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so we'll see. But anyway, that might be another another next step. So I'm I'm open for any ideas on how to keep moving this forward. I think this is a you know a great contribution. Uh, yeah, and I, you know, I'm, I'm here too. Anything, you know, any, any thoughts that you have about how to move it forward, I'm very open to it. And you know, I'd love if, if Kristen Neff hasn't heard of focusing, or I'd be happy to give her a session too, just to, to show her. Mm -hmm. I'll definitely mention it when I see her. Great. <laughs> because I, yeah, I want to incorporate this into kind of my work as well. So I, I really want to learn more about it and practice and. So. Yeah, well, let's let's be in contact and <laughs> okay, and grow, and, and grow this. Uh huh. Great. Yeah, I'm all for that. So, um, I guess we'll just kind of follow up via email and uh, yeah, see right. what the next step is. If there's, I'll try to figure out what what I can do. I mean, it, you know, we can do. You can listen to me as much as you want. <laughs> <laughs> you can focus on me as much as you want, but I guess I need to kind of work a little bit too on the other side of the focusing I mean that be, be the listener too yeah so so yeah let's 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 talk on email and and and, take, and figure out some next steps to do that okay well with that <laughs> I will end the recording